Okay, so chapter five, uh, all about earthquakes. We need to know a little bit about um, different types of stress. We talked about this, in fact, and we took some notes on it. Tension, which is pulling apart. Compression, which is pushing together. And shearing, which is a side-by-side -side force. Uh, we drew some pictures. We drew this picture here. Um, tensional forces or pulling apart forces create what we saw in chapter four, mid-ocean ridges and mid-ocean trenches. And um, by two plates being pushed apart by the mantle rising up between them. And here is a time-lapse version of that, of what happens um, um, in a little bit more detail where um, those sediments or those um, mantles come up and push those plates apart. If it's on land, it creates a rift valley. If it's in the ocean, it creates a mid-ocean trench and a mid-ocean ridge. Compressional or pushing together forces, um, there's two different types. One type we'll talk about first is where the ground actually breaks and makes a fault. The other part, the other type where the ground is flexible um, and creates folds, we'll talk about second. In chapter four, relating this back to chapter four, um, this is what the ductile creation of folds and compression pushing together is what makes a convergent boundary or two plates coming together and crashing together. Because the oceanic plate is made up of mostly basalt underneath, it's heavier and denser, and it dives beneath the continental plate, usually, not always, but usually. And it forms this deep, deep ocean trench like you see um, in the Aleutian Islands in Alaska and the Kuril Trench in Japan, and a mountain range of volcanoes like you see here in California, Oregon, and Washington, like Mount Hood, Mount Lassen, Mount Backer, Mount Whitney, okay, Mount Shasta, all of those um, are all of those are um, mountains that are actually volcanoes created by this subduction. Shearing forces um, are side by side movements, and we'll see what those make as well. Um, a couple days ago, I gave you some lecture notes on this and drew out some of these things. So this is just a review of that. Um, we talked about different types of faults, normal faults, reverse faults, strike slip faults, and these oblique slip faults. There's two types, a normal and a reverse. Um, I drew the normal one, and um, I just didn't draw the oblique slip reverse one. Remember that for these faults, there is a hanging wall. The hanging wall is the, the chunk of rock that's above the fault. The foot wall is always the chunk of rock that's below the fault. So this is a normal fault where the hanging wall moves down. And um, so that's called a normal fault. Reverse fault, on the other hand, oh, and the normal fault happens when there's tension when there's pulling apart forces. This type of fault forms where there's compression or moving together forces and the hanging wall moves up. There's also strike slip or shear faults. And this, there's two types. They're also, they're also called transform faults. Um, these types of faults, this is the San Andreas fault, partly. Um, it's also a compressional uh, fault. There's two types of strike slip fault. One is a left lateral where if you're standing on one side of the fault looking across to the other side, the other side moves left. Either if you're standing right here or if you come around to this side and stand here and look this way, the other side moves left. Okay, you see how that works? In a right lateral strike slip fault, if you stand right here, the other side moves to the right. Or if you stand over here, this side here moves to the right. Okay? Or in this case, be down that way. So there's right lateral and left lateral strike slip faults. San Andreas Fault, prime example of this. 
and the San Andreas fault is a left lateral strike slip fault. So if you stood right here and looked out to Monterey Bay um, from Loma Prieta and you looked across the San Andreas fault, that chunk of ocean would be moving to the left. Yeah. There's oblique slip normal faults as well. And the oblique slip normal faults are moving down and to the, in this case, left. This is a left oblique slip normal fault. Okay? So you have that combined type of movement. Here's a reverse slip oblique fault, okay? Where the hanging wall is above the fault. So this is formed under compression, okay? Under compression. And this is the one that I didn't draw. Okay, so what do you find? What kind of geological features do you find at these different types of faults and, and stresses and strains? Well, mountain range is one of them. So at a compressional um, fault, you find these mountain ranges, especially with the hanging wall going up. Okay, if the hanging wall goes up, it forms a mountain range. Likewise, and this is a reverse fault. Likewise, with a normal fault over here in green, you if the hanging wall. Um, actually, that's a that's a reverse fault too, isn't it? The top one. The uh, middle one is a normal fault. So on a normal fault you find a mountain range as well. And on a strike slip fault, you find features that have been offset. Like over here, this river has been offset. Here and here. Okay. Other features at these types of areas are um, something called a horst. It was first described in Germany. In Germany. So um, it's got a name that is, I believe it's German. And this is a tensional feature, and you get a middle segment here where two um, normal faults are next to each other. You get a middle segment that is left in place and the two sides drop down, and that's called a horst. The reverse of that is called a graben, and the middle part drops down in a graben. The graben has tensional forces instead of compression. This side and this side are moving apart and if there are two um, if there are two normal faults here under tension they will form this valley and that valley could form a stream bed or something like this. Here's an actual one right here and you can see one of these right down here in Capitola um, along the beach at the Capitola Cliffs. And here's what it looks like in real life. You have a graben in the middle where it drops down. You have a horst on this side and a horst on this side where it has pushed up forming mountain ranges. And there's also something called a half, a half gra graben where it's kind of halfway. Okay. And here's a real life example. The White Inyo Mountains is a horst. The Owens Valley is a graben. Okay, right here in California. And then here's the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Pacific Ocean would be out here. And we discussed these features and drew them in your lab notebooks. Okay, geological folds. Geological folds. Um, I think I'm going to... Um, just give you a couple more slides and then we'll get on to our models. A syncline is when there's a fold up. Write this down. Oh, sorry. Syncline is fold down. Anticline is fold up. Thank you. Um, and I'd like you to memorize these two. So write it down in your lab notebooks. Syncline is fold down. Anticline is fold up. That's one thing you'll need to memorize. And I'll show you a couple of pictures of these things now, real life pictures, as well as uh, cartoon drawings. 
here's a syncline. Okay, here's a syncline where the fold is going down. So this is a downward fold, downward fold. And here you see a couple real life examples and a cartoon drawing. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could draw a picture of this, just a cartoon with a fold down being the syncline. And next is an anticline where the fold is up. Here's an anticline, two cartoon drawings and one real life drawing. And you could, you know, just draw a fold going up and label that anticline. Okay, um, that's the basics of this. We'll get into a little bit more detail on folding um, in our next discussion. Okay, good to go? All right. Good job, guys.